Imagine a single company that launches rockets, operates a massive internet constellation from space, and consistently wins huge government contracts, all while slashing costs by reusing its hardware. How does SpaceX actually make money? In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to break down exactly how they turn launches, satellites, and big money deals into a powerhouse business. Whether you're curious about the Starlink business model, how NASA contracts fuel their growth, or where the real profits are in the rocket business, this video will make it all simple. Stick around, because by the end, you'll understand SpaceX's main revenue streams and what could make them even richer tomorrow. Welcome back. If you're looking for clear, no-fluff breakdowns of the space business and its technology, you are in the perfect place. Let's jump right in. First up, let's talk about launch services. This is SpaceX's core cash engine. Think of it like an airline, but for space. Governments, satellite companies, and private firms all pay SpaceX for a ticket to put their payloads into orbit. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets offer different price points and capabilities, catering to various customer needs. The real magic, though, is reusability. Because SpaceX can land and reuse its rocket boosters, each flight costs them significantly less to operate. This allows them to offer competitive pricing that undercuts the competition while still maintaining healthy profit margins. These commercial launches, especially with repeat clients and bulk deals, provide a steady, reliable flow of income. This is their most visible and immediate way of making money. But launches are just the beginning. The real game changer is Starlink. Instead of a one-time fee for a launch, Starlink generates recurring revenue through ongoing broadband subscriptions. Homes, businesses, and even governments pay a monthly fee for high-speed internet. In business, predictable recurring cash flow is king, and it's far more valuable than one-off contracts. The Starlink business model is all about scale. The more subscribers they get, the more revenue they have to fund more satellites, develop cheaper user terminals, and expand their global coverage. Plus, they offer higher tier services for businesses, mobility like on planes and ships, and government clients, which all command premium prices. So, while launch income gets you off the ground, Starlink is designed to generate long-term sustainable profit that can fuel the entire company's ambitions. Next, let's look at the bedrock of their financial stability, NASA contracts and other government deals. These are more than just paychecks. They are pillars of credibility and funding. When SpaceX wins a contract from an agency like NASA, it often involves funding for research, critical test flights, and specialized missions. These contracts usually come with strict requirements and, more importantly, steady, predictable payments. For a company like SpaceX, a NASA contract is a massive vote of confidence. It not only brings in revenue, but also opens doors to long-term partnerships, future work, and shared technology development. While government work might seem less glamorous than commercial launches, it's incredibly reliable, providing a stable foundation that helps balance the natural ups and downs of the commercial market. Now, let's talk about the future. SpaceX invests an enormous amount of money in research and development, and this is both a massive cost and a strategic investment. The crown jewel of this effort is the Starship program. The goal of Starship is to create a fully reusable rocket capable of carrying massive payloads to orbit and beyond at a fraction of today's costs. If Starship delivers on its promises, it could completely revolutionize the industry and unlock entirely new markets. We're talking about lunar cargo missions, building cities on Mars, and deploying thousands of satellites at an incredibly low cost per kilogram. This potential future revenue stream is speculative, yes, but its upside is astronomical. Investors and the company see R&D not as an expense, but as a long-term multiplier. The money they spend today on programs like Starship could create tomorrow its most dominant and profitable part of the business. Diving deeper into Starlink, it is important to understand that it isn't just about providing internet to homes in rural areas. There's a whole other layer of specialized, high-value services. Think about maritime connectivity for huge shipping fleets, reliable in-flight internet for major airlines, dedicated enterprise solutions for large corporations, and secure, 
high bandwidth links for government and military operations. These premium verticals are willing to pay much more for guaranteed reliability and performance. Selling managed satellite capacity and services to businesses is a much higher margin path than basic home internet. This strategy not only boosts profits, but also diversifies Starlink's revenue sources, making the entire venture more resilient. Beyond launches and satellites, SpaceX also makes money from a variety of related areas. By building their rockets and satellites almost entirely in-house, they not only save costs, but have also created a powerful manufacturing business. This capability can be monetized, perhaps through partnerships or by offering specialized hardware to other companies. Furthermore, the vast amounts of data collected by their satellites, along with their proprietary software and intellectual property, can be licensed to generate additional income. And while it's a smaller piece of the pie, don't forget about merchandise, media deals, and promotional opportunities. These are small but notable extras that complement the core income streams and build the brand. So what's the secret source that ties all of this together? It's reusability. The ability to recover and refly rocket boosters is the single most important factor in their business model. It dramatically cuts production costs for each launch. Lower costs mean they can either offer lower prices to attract more customers or keep prices stable and enjoy much higher profit margins. Or, as SpaceX often does, a bit of both. Reusability allows SpaceX to increase its launch frequency, reduce the lead time for customers and consistently undercut its competitors. Over time, these efficiency gains compound, making every single one of their revenue streams more profitable and powerful. Of course, no business, especially one this ambitious, is without risks. They face significant regulatory hurdles, the ever-present danger of launch failures, growing concerns about satellite congestion in orbit, and increasing competition from both new and established players. Starlink AS capital intensity is another major factor. The upfront cost to build and launch thousands of satellites is massive. Furthermore, their lucrative government contracts depend on shifting political priorities and budgets. And any major technical setback, whether with Falcon or Starship, can be incredibly expensive and cause long delays. Understanding SpaceX's revenue model means looking at both the incredible income potential and these very real risks. So, let's put it all together you can see a beautifully layered and interconnected business model. Launch services provide immediate cash flow and build customer relationships. NASA and government contracts bring in stable long-term funding and prestige. Starlink is being built to supply massive recurring subscription revenue and global scale. R&D into projects like Starship offers a speculative but potentially enormous future upside. And finally, specialized services and in-house manufacturing diversify their income and strengthen their competitive advantage. Each piece of the puzzle supports the others. Launches deploy Starlink satellites. Starlink's future revenue will fund R&D for Mars, and that R&D improves the economics of their launches. It's a powerful, self-reinforcing cycle designed to accelerate growth and dominate the future of space. If you found this breakdown helpful and want more deep dives like this, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I've got a question for you. Which of SpaceX's revenue streams surprised you the most? Was it the launch services, the Starlink business model, or the importance of NASA contracts? Drop a comment below. I'll be reading the best replies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.